top of the day, beautiful people. Top of the day. Hey, TT. Hey, girl. Hey, Baswabu. Baswabu. Nikki. Hey, girl. Hey. All right, y'all. Okay, we're good. Tiffany, hey girl, hey, Betwabu, Betwabu. All right, y'all. Today it is Friday, April the 17th, 2020, day 123 of year two of reading through the books of the law and the prophets. All right, y'all. Today we're in 2 Chronicles 3, 4, and 5. Let me make a quick mention of something real quick. Guys, if y'all haven't read through like Jubilees and Jasher, you really should. Something I read, I, like, I listened to Jasher before. You know how some sometimes you listen to something or you're reading something, you just reading so long. Some stuff you don't just like, you don't take in, you know. And it's like when you go read it, you're like, wait a minute. Did I read it the first time? Okay, so in Jasher chapter 49, remember Jasher gives like a detailed uh, description um, of like Genesis through uh, Deuteronomy, right? So Joseph... When he was, he, he was, his brother sold him into slavery. Skip forward a little bit. Um, do you know before uh, Pharaoh put him, made him like second in command over Egypt, there were certain requirements that had to be um, held by the second in command. And knowing the languages of, uh, well, at that time, there were 70 languages across the earth. And the second in command had to be knowledgeable and had to speak those 70 languages. Now, here's the kicker. After he was thrown in jail, after Potiphar's wife had, um, was it Potiphar's wife? I think it was Potiphar's wife. Or was it before Potiphar's wife? But anyway, he was down in the jail and, um, he had given the dream, you know, that Pharaoh had had the dream about, you know, remember the baker and the um, the butcher were down there. That had already happened. So when the issue came up and they knew the famine was coming, Joseph had already given him the dream and the interpretation. But the, and, and when you read in Genesis, they kind of like give you like a summation of everything that happened. They kind of like pull like the meat of that out, what all the details of it and just gave you the summation of that and oh. Pharaoh said, since you were able to interpret this and all this, I'm going to put you over it. But in between that time when he said, oh, thank you for interpreting this and seeing that, you know, you worship a living God. And he gave you the interpretation of this. We need a man that's able to actually do all of this that you see as somebody that's wise enough to store up all this for the seven years of famine and plenty. Right. So between this, I'm about to tell you what happened in between that time. So between that time, um. They they said, oh, well, um, there is, like, no man here in the kingdom who can really do that. And somebody said, well, what about um, Joseph, the one that interpreted the dream about the seven years of famine and the seven years of plenty? What about him? And um, somebody said, no, he can't be second in command of Egypt. You know, for one, he's a Hebrew, you know, um, and two... He doesn't he only speaks Hebrew. He doesn't speak the 70 languages of the earth. Okay, so now Pharaoh's throne in Egypt, there are 70 steps that leads up to his throne. And there were 70 steps because there were 70 languages across the earth. Now, when you come to talk to Pharaoh, Betwabu, Alicia Betwabu, that was like a test. Every step was a different language. I'm not sure if they had the steps marked or whatever, but each step, I'm sure there was some kind of marking on each step to let you know which language you needed to speak or whatever. But anyway, that was the day before they pulled him back before Pharaoh. But that night, the day that they was having a conversation, they said, he's Hebrew. He only speaks Hebrew. He has no clue. He, he, he probably don't even understand the other 69 languages of the earth. So that night, 
And this part was like, how did I like skip over? Like you go back and read stuff. It's like, how did I miss this? I don't remember that I read this. That night, an angel appeared to Joseph in the jailhouse. And he actually taught him that night in one night, 69 more languages. That's what it says. He was taught all the 70. Well, he already had one because he spoke Hebrew. He was taught all the 70 languages of the earth. So that next morning when Pharaoh's guard came and pulled him um, to come before him to kind of test and see, hey, if, if, if you can speak these 70 languages, bro, you know, um, you you got this position. So as he walked in there, Joseph began to step on the first step and he began to speak a language. Stepped on the second step. speak, And, and he kept speaking each language as he ascended to um, Pharaoh's throne. You could only ascend as high as the languages that you knew. And I'm like, who thinks of stuff? like that and furthermore who can retain 70 languages so i'm thinking there's like a spiritual download i mean we're able to do some powerful stuff with the help of Yah. but he was able to speak all 70 languages he ascended to the very top stair right there and met pharaoh at his throne everybody in that place was amazed because it's like how is this Hebrew and where did he learn all these 70 languages and they rejoiced that there was somebody there in their kingdom that they could actually give that position like they rejoiced that Joseph got that position that blew me away I was like how did I miss this up all last night just going back through it I'm like and I know I talk about Jasher a lot that just blew me away Jasher chapter 49 if you haven't read it Go back and read that jank today. And also, I love Jasher. What is it? Jasher chapter 53. That's when um his brothers, they started going toe-to-toe. And it was like, nobody can do the These boys are of our father's lineage because nobody on the earth was given superpowers like this, y'all. And low-key, that's why. Remember, Yisolili, Israel, used to be the fear of the entire earth. Ain't nobody trying. When they heard about us, they that like, move on out the way. You got something that's going to try it. What? Don't you know I defeated this king? I defeated that king? Yeah, they tried it. But nobody could defeat us unless we got in trouble with our God. With, unless we got in trouble with Yah. And then he's like, listen, they can't be sent in my camp. They can't be sent in my army. You know, so... um, It's really, really interesting. If you've never read that, go and read that. That's Jasher chapter 53. And you know, they, you know, the two brothers, they bickering back and forth. He said, look, if I pull my sheet, if I pull my sword from my sheet, it will not return until I pretty much slit your throat all the way to Pharaoh's. That's the only time it's going to go back. And then they going back and forth, flexing their muscles and stuff. Judah picks up a rock, probably about a 10 pound rock, tosses it up in the air, catches it, sits it on the, uh, sits it under his thigh and sits on it and it, grinds it to powder who do you know can grind and ground a 10 pound rock to powder with the power of their thigh nobody but the children of yeso lily but their power has been restrained for the time being but the power is going to be returned to the children of yeso lily and that's when we're going to see the true sons and daughters of the most high began to manifest himself some of us Probably a good bit of us won't, um, and I know some some of this because we we got rebels in the land, and our people just don't believe nothing, you know. Um, but when that power returns, when we return to the original laws that y'all y'all gave to his people, and we begin to line up with that, he begins to, like he said, he is going to release that power, um, and favor back onto us, um. I was listening to Jasher a couple a couple weeks ago, and that fight between the brother was rough. Girl, yes, but it's like you. It's like once I started reading Jasher chapter fifty three, I'm like, oh, 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 what? And he said, "Have you not heard what my brothers, uh, was it Simon and Levi, did to the city of uh, what is it, the city of Shechem when they violated our sister Dinah? Oh, and I'm much worse than them." He said, "Naphtali." Go number the go number the city streets and stuff. And Natalie ran as he Natalie ran. You know, uh, y'all seen um the Incredibles. You know, Dash. It, it explained that Natalie was as fast as that. Like he could run over wheat fields and not cause the wheat to break or even 
that's that's how fast and they said he was so light footed and fast that it blew people's mind like uh judah let out a scream it said like as a uh a, a roar and a screech as like a lion and it caused the entire city to it, it caused the earthquake and caused the women to have, that were pregnant to have miscarriages i'm like Phew, we need that power where is that at <laughs> you know so but that's that's why I really encourage you to read some of these books, especially from the apocryphal, because for one, they're really faith building. A lot of times we don't realize if you don't realize you're able to do something, your mind won't even think in that vein. It's like, what? We can do that. Oh, shoot. You know, it like stretches your mind and it, it stretches your limits and it helps you grow. And the power of the prayers that were answered immediately by our people, especially when they're, um, who was it, Susanna. Susanna was being accused by two noble men of high standing um, that she was being a whore in, in her husband's house. But it was them two who was trying to sleep with her, and she rejected them. So they made up a lie. Oh, you won't sleep with us. You're going to die today, heifer. You know. So, But she got out there. They took her out there. And this was actually the last chapters of Daniel right now. And this, Daniel has 12 chapters. But Susanna, they call in Apocrypha, they call it Susanna, but it's actually the last couple chapters of Daniel, which is why if you have a, um, it's back here. Did they put it in that order? It, yeah. If you actually have a Sefer, it has it right behind, uh, is Daniel, the prayer of Azariah, Susanna, and Bell the dragon. All of that right there. Those four books, Daniel, the prayer of Azariah, Susanna, and Bell, the dragon, that's all Daniel. They just split it up, you know, and they gave it different names, but that's all the book of Daniel. Um, so, um, but yes, yeah, Susanna is what? Two, no, it's one whole chapter, but it's 64 verses. Um, but also, so when they was about to stone her, she cried out to y'all. She said, Father... Only you know that I'm innocent. And, of course, these two men that are accusing me. And then as they were about to kill her, Daniel said, wait a minute. You would kill a daughter of Zion without giving her a fair trial? He said, no, you need to um, you need to double check these two men or whatever. He said, let me interrogate them. He said, separate them. Put them in separate rooms and let me uh, interrogate them. Because they went and told the lie that, oh, we walked in here and we saw the queen laid up under a tree having sex with this man. But the man was, they were older. These were older men, the count, wise counsel to the king. He said she was laid up under a tree having sex with this uh, younger man or whatever. And um, so Daniel, that's what she was being accused of, adultery and all that stuff, right? So Daniel said, separate them. Let me interrogate them and let's see if their stories truly lined up. So they separate them and he talked to the first one. He said, okay. You, you, you son of Bilal, you know, he knew he was evil. Um, he said, tell me if you saw her, if you caught her, or oh, they said that they were trying to catch the man, but he was too strong than him and he got away. They didn't know who he was. And they tried to explain, I was like, these boy, these lines, so-and-sos. So he said, tell me if you saw her having sex with a, a man under a tree, what kind of tree was it? And he, he named the tree. He said, you're a liar. And you're going to pay for that with your life. And so they left him there. Went to the other guy. Okay, you son of Belial, you lying prophet. If you saw her having sex with him, he asked him the same question. And he named a different tree. So when he brought the evidence before the, the court, pretty much, she was ready, literally, she was on her way to death. You know, and you who heard her because her life, she literally, she lived a life. She was a very, very beautiful woman. And they said she covered herself with a veil because her beauty was so great that when they brought her before the council to accuse her when they removed the veil from her face that the people wept at her beauty because of how beautiful she was like they never really got to see her face and they were just in awe of her beauty and it you know how you see babies and stuff like or you see somebody that's they just they're just uh they're just beautiful men when you like and it it it, it kind of makes you like oh Gosh, they are beautiful. That's how it was. So, um, and she she was she was righteous and she was raised with righteous pain. She was righteous all of her life in the eyes of Yah. So he heard her cry. And I mean she kept to the commands all her life. And so he heard her cry and immediately 
he gave justice to her and those two um counselors from the king's court that tried to literally sabotage her life because she wouldn't have sex with them they died that day and and when you read stuff like that and, and especially in a a, a culture and a, a world where you see women being mistreated a lot of times not just women but you know it, it, it's a big thing and it seems like sometimes women don't get justice and it's stereotyped and everything it doesn't have to be that way it really doesn't if we keep to y'all's commands as he says to keep to them and we really walk up rightly before him not making a oh i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna repent not like that but you truly strive to keep to his commands and you live a pure and holy life at all times not saying you don't make mistakes but as soon as you realize oh father forgive me i did not and you make amends you do what it is you need to do and you continue to grow he answers your prayers and he hears you so much quicker and there's a lot of stories like that in these books that um are in apocrypha and it just it just it blows your mind like i can believe for stuff that a lot of people can't believe for like my grandma used to say before she passed away like for years she said pam you got this stupid faith you know she said because you like believe believe for anything and a lot of times it'll happen for me you know so um so, like I said, y'all, y'all get a chance. Y'all can read it. Y'all can like go to YouTube because all these books, um, somebody's read them and recorded them, and they're really good. Um, they're really good quality audios to listen to. And you can just listen to some of these. Let them play in your ears. Most of y'all at home anyway. Listen to it. Learn about it. Sit down and read it. But I'm telling you, it it does wonders for your faith, and and it it um. It builds your confidence, especially if you know you're walking uprightly before y'all. Like those who, you know if you're walking uprightly or not. I mean, if not saying that you may not be walking in a little bit of ignorance, but until your whore reveals that to you, you're walking in the knowledge and the understanding that you know and you're doing what you know to do that's right. You know, your your confidence grows to be able to ask him for stuff. Even for little stuff, like seriously, when I was going out a lot before all this stuff happened, like I would always pray. If I got to go somewhere like downtown Norfolk for something or a meeting or something like that, where I know, you know, I don't know the park in here in Hampton Road sometimes, it can be a beast, you know. Um, if you got to park like a good bit of way to, to get to your destination, you got to walk. Sometimes I just didn't feel like walking. You know, I'd be like, Father, let somebody, as soon as I pull up, let somebody be pulling out in a parking space right up close. And I'd be like, I'm serious. I mean, stuff like that. I just, I really don't feel like walking to that. I just really don't. You know, and I was just honest, you know, and no, and Jeremiah was in a car with me one time and it, cause it, it happens a lot. And so I did that prayer and I did it out loud just so he could begin to hear and see these things happening. Right. So one day, this is, this is last year, I think it was like last summer. I had took all the kids with me and I was, um, I had wrote a check and we was kind of, I was like, like, I didn't write it. You know how you have to pay rent, like the, between like the first and the fifth, um, uh, it's like your grace period, the first and the fifth. So I forgot to mail off our, um, our warehouse rent check early. So I was like, you know, I ain't gonna drop it in the mail. I'm gonna just drive it down there. And me and, and the kids was at the warehouse. So I'm like, come on y'all, everybody go. And where I had to take it downtown Norfolk, you have to park in a parking garage. And I wasn't going to leave the kids at the warehouse because I was going to a different city. And so out there, like downtown Norfolk, if y'all have been to downtown Norfolk, you know how the buildings are down there and the, the business centers and everything. You got these high rise buildings and stuff. You got maybe like four parking spots in front of the building that are like loading zones and you got to put the change in the meter and everything. So I was like, Father, when I get up here, I said, I do not want to put this car. I do not want to go in the garage because... I didn't want to take all the kids out. I mean, I could have, but I just didn't. And plus, I had Jeremiah with me. Um, so, what? yeah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah was 16 already. So, I was like, I don't want to take all them in, you know, because I just, I'm literally going in, going to the 11th floor. I go in, get in the elevator, go to the 11th floor. The office is right there, go in, boom. She take the check, she write my receipt, and I'm out literally not in there any longer than 7 to 10 minutes. I was like, Father, so... Let there be a parking spot right there in the front of the building. As soon as I'm pulling up, so because people slick, they see, oh, you walk into your car, we're going to follow you in our car because we're going to get that parking spot. You know, I was like, I didn't want to have to deal with any of that and rolling around and trying to find one. And I didn't want to pay the money in the parking garage and all this stuff, right? Although it was only be 10 minutes, so I wouldn't have to pay anything. But I had to go in there and go up to a level and find a parking spot and take the elevator either up or down to the 11th floor. It's just, I just, I didn't want to go through all that because I had all the kids with me, you know. So I was like, Father, 
let somebody, because I know all them spots are full. As soon as I come around that corner from that light, whoever is sitting there, let I don't care which one it is, let one of them parking spots open up as I come around the corner that nobody can jump in between. And I said the prayer when I was about five minutes away. And then as we was pulling up, I said, Jeremiah, watch the parking spot. Watch it open up as soon as we pull around the corner. Coming around that corner, that light is a white pickup truck. Pulls right out that spot where I could just, he pulls out because it was like one, two, three. And he was on the very end. He pulls, he pulls out. And Jeremiah's like, get out of here. He said, oh, how did you know that was going to happen? I said, Jeremiah. Cause I I practice my faith all the time with stuff like that. It blew him away. He talked about it. He called his friend. He said, listen, let me tell you something. If you ever need prayer for something, you might need to call my mama. Let me just tell you what happened. I'm just like, Jeremiah, calm down. I said, this happened for you too. I practice it all the time. So it blew him away. So that was just a good example. Like little things you can practice building your faith on stuff and like actually seeing it happen. Things where you can tangibly see change, you know, so, but all right, y'all. So I just want to give y'all that hold on sorry I'm gonna I'm address your comment in a second Tiffany said uh hold on it's popping on see more sometimes it works sometimes it don't Tiffany said amazing time this morning I'm looking through my concordance for all the bible mentions that are not I can't see it this it's not I can't see the rest of your message Tiffany Oh, that are not part of the Bible. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in it. You can probably Google it, but all through the Old Testament, especially Kings and Chronicles, it, um, uh, <laughs> it mentions those. Tar, you funny. Tar said, well, I need you to pray that this is a girl. Forget about the dream. Laugh out loud. Tar, I already told you. I saw your baby already. Um, sound like my grandma now. I saw you before you was born. Cause my grandma, she said she saw all of us before we were born. And grandma was right. Like, all the time like she said she saw our kids she said she said she knew what each one was before they were born you know so i tell her i was like look i sound like my grandma i already know plus you murphy that 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 third baby is a boy it's not a girl it's a boy you know so you got you got to try a few more times before you get the girl you know so but no nah, i'm just joking with you talk okay y'all let's finish let's do this reading day it's really short um second chronicles chapter three four and five so then Solomon began to build the house of Yahuwah at Jerusalem and Mount Moriah, where Yahuwah appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan and Jebusite. <laughs> so I said, I will not. Well, we'll see. But as long as the baby is nice and healthy, we're good on that. We're good on that. Third grandbaby. And he began to build in the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. Now, these are the things wherein Solomon was instructed for the building of the house of Yahuwah. The length by cubits after the first measure was three score cubits and a breadth 20 cubits. And the porch that was in front of the house, the length of it was according to the breadth of the house, 20 cubits. And the height was 120. And he overlaid it within with pure gold, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, Ty, let me know when you get the ultrasound where it reveals the gender of the baby. And the greater house he sealed with fir tree, which he overlaid with fine gold and set thereon palm trees and chains. And he garnished the house with precious stones for beauty. And the gold was gold of parvaim. And he overlaid the house also, the beams and the posts and the walls thereof and the doors thereof with gold and grave cherubims on the wall. And he made the most holy house and the length whereof was according to the breadth of the house, 20 cubits and the breadth thereof, 20 cubits. And he overlaid it with fine gold amounting to 600 talents and the weight of the nails were 50 shekels of gold. And he overlaid the upper chambers with gold. And in the most holy house, he made two cherubims of image work and overlaid them with gold. And the wings of the cherubims were 20 cubits long. One wing of one cherub was five cubits, reaching to the wall of the house. And the other wing was likewise five cubits, reaching to the wing of the other cherubim. Oh, oh, shoot. We don't know about money, Tara. Okay, let us know. Call, call as soon as they call y'all. I know y'all are. And one wing of the other chair was five cubits, reaching to the wall of the house. And the other wing was five cubits, also joining to the wing of the other chair. 
The wings of the cherubim spread themselves forth twenty cubits, and they stood on their feet, and their faces were inward. And they made the veil of blue and purple and crimson and fine linen, and wrought the cherubims thereon. Also he made before the house two pillars of thirty and five cubits high, and the chapiter that was on the top of each of them was five cubits. And he made chains as in the oracle, and he put them on the heads of the pillars, and made a hundred pomegranates, and on them the chains. And he reared up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and the other on the left, and called the name of that on the right hand, Jachin, and the name on the left, Boaz. Second Chronicles chapter 4. Moreover, he made an altar of brass, 20 cubits the length thereof, and 20 cubits the breadth thereof, and 10 cubits the height thereof. Also, he made a molten sea of 10 cubits from brim to brim, round and compass, and five cubits the height thereof, and a line of 30, 30 cubits did compass round about it. And under it was a similitude of oxen, which did compass it round about, ten and a cubit compassing the sea round about. Two rows of oxen were cast when it was cast. It stood upon 12 oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above them, and all their hinder parts were inward. And the thickness of it was a hand breadth, and the brim of it was like the work of the brim of a cup with flowers of lilies, and it received and held 3,000 baths. He made also 10 lavers and put five on the right hand and five on the left to wash in them such things as they offered for the burnt offering they washed in them, but the sea was for the priest to wash in. And he made 10 candlesticks of gold according to their form. He made <laughs> according to their form and set them in the temple, five on the right hand and five on the left. He also made ten tables and placed them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left, and he made a hundred basins of gold. Furthermore, he made the court of the priests and the great court and doors for the court and overlaid the doors of them with brass. And he set the sea on the right side of the east end over against the south. And Hiram made the pots and the shovels and the basins, and Hiram finished the work that he was to make for King Solomon for the house of Yahuwah. To wit, the two pillars and the pommels and the chapiters, which were on the top of the two pillars, and the two wreaths to cover the two pommels of the chapiters, which were on the top of the pillars, and 400 pomegranates on the two wreaths, two rows of pomegranates on each wreath to cover the two pommels of the chapiters, which were upon the pillars. He also made bases and layers, and he made them upon the bases on the sea and the 12 oxen under it. The pots also and the shovels and the flesh hooks and all the instruments did Huram his father make to King Solomon for the house of Yahuwah of bright brass. In the plain of Jordan did, did the king cast them in the clay ground between Sukkoth and Zeredath. Thus Solomon made all the vessels in great abundance, for the weight of the brass could not be found out. And Solomon made all the vessels that were for the house of Yahuwah, the gold altar also, and the tables whereon the showbread was set. Moreover, the candlesticks with their lamps that they should burn after the manner before the oracle of pure gold, and the flowers and the lamps and the tongs made of gold, and that perfect gold, and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold, and the entry of the house, the inner doors thereof for the most holy place, and the doors of the house of the temple were of gold. Last chapter for today, y'all. Second Chronicles chapter 5. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of Yahuwah was finished. And Solomon bought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of Yahuwah. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel unto Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah out of the city of David, which is Zion. Wherefore all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast, which was in the seventh month. And all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. And they brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle did the priests and the Levites bring up. Also King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed sheep and oxen which could not be told nor numbered for a multitude. And the priests brought and the Ark of the Covenant unto his place, to the oracle of the house, and the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubims. And the cherubims spread forth their wings over the place of the Ark, and the cherubims covered the Ark 
and the staves thereof above. And they drew out the staves of the ark, that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle, but they were not seen without. And there it was unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables which Moses put it put therein at Horeb, when Yahuwah made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them Asaph of Heman, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and the singers were one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Yahuwah, when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised Yahuwah, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever, that then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of Yahuwah, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of Yahuwah had filled the house. That's so cute. You still look at James like a teen in love. Wow. Trina. You hear what Trina said? Sorry. <laughs> she said, so cute. You still look at James like a teen in love. Girl, we feel old, though. She here. better. <laughs> they can see your dreads. Like Show your mom. face. Like my mama have always said, <laughs> you know what's right. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's beautiful, though. I look at her the same way. Thank you, Trina. We got so many kids, we got to. Yeah, we got. Well, what else we gonna do? <laughs> like, what else so we gonna do? We <laughs> <laughs> like, like. <laughs> I know some people funny, think dog. some people think oh they must have the best marriage. No, we be want to take each other's heads off from time to time. And I just learned, you know, my husband loved to talk. He loved to talk more than me, so I let him talk. Otherwise, we'll be talking all night. Sometimes I just don't mm-hmm. do me, don't do me like that. Though. Oh, you don't? You don't love to talk? You don't talk more than me. I mean, I love to talk. <laughs> don't but- do that, man. Don't do me like that. <laughs> you bogus. <laughs> So, like, seriously, Finish your reading, man. I'm done with the reading. <laughs> Thank right, you. Well, like, seriously. I said, dog, um, <laughs> Thank y'all for coming out. God bless. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> like, seriously, we had them conversations. Everybody had they, they rough conversations from time to time. I was like, you know what? We're going to make this work or not. Like, uh, who's going to take the kids? Uh, maybe we should split them up. And it's like, you know what? Somebody going to be paying child support or something. It was, you know what? We just better make this work because. Like, you ain't got really too many baby mamas or baby daddies that's going to take a whole tribe. We like the Brady Bunch and stuff. It's like, uh, yeah, we'll make this work. But it's not easy all the time, y'all. It's hard. It, every day. It's, every, it's, it's called like, making a decision. It, it is. And sometimes you know I mean? it's like the Alcoholics Anonymous 12-step program. We just got to take it day by day. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> uh. You don't oh, read, man. I'm you're done not supposed to be talking with about the this reading. reading. I mean, you came downstairs. You wanted to join in. I mean, Trina started it. Oh, Trina, look, I know, right? I already man, know. Listen. Y'all always been like that. So look, to me and Charles said, me and Elijah do every other night. Last night, nah, about nah. eight eight thirty p.m. to eight thirty a.m. shift. <laughs> we don't miss a beat. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, y'all funny. Tar, you funny girl. You know that. Uh, okay, y'all. All right, so. That was our reading for today. All right, beautiful people. Also, I want y'all to start tracking with me the the sun and the moon and stuff in the gate so we can... I mean, I've already figured out, like, last year, and I, some of my family members already know. Y'all remember when I changed uh, the Sabbath? I was like, y'all, I think the Sabbath, you know, it's not here. I think it... it um, I think it rotates according to the book of Enoch and what I'm reading and everything, you know. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a change it, you know, because I want to line up, you know, to what Yahuwah is saying. But I kind of got some kickback from a few people. You can't do this. I was like, well, according to this, this, and this. But other people weren't reading some of those books or whatever. Um, so it's like, huh, you know what, Father, until I can explain it in a way where they can understand. I put all these references together. Like, because I couldn't, I mean, I understood it, but... Sometimes I have tr- issues or trouble with explaining it to where other people can understand it, making sure. So it's been a year. I was like, you know what? And I did a video. I was like, y'all, I'm going to switch it back, you know, and to make sure, you know, I ain't confusing anybody. What's your other book? What's your other, your other book? 
Mm-mm. No, the the Sabbath. Actually, calculating the Sabbath, how Yahuwah calculates it. Oh, like, yes. because they, they get it. Like, because y'all know, well, with the changing of the calendars and everything with the different, um, this, like, early centuries and stuff, there used to be eight-day weeks. You know, you can go look that up. So, they, they changed it a couple times, and then when they changed from, uh, I think it was the... I think it was the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. There was like a week where it started. It was like the first, like the new month had started. It was the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. And then during that time period where they switched, they it went from the fourth day, like April the 4th, and the next day was like April the 15th. They like took out. I was like, this is crazy, but you can actually go look all that up. And they changed it from the eight-day week to the seven-day week. And they just they got everybody discombobulated. And when they first did that, there were like only three places that actually agreed to that calendar because it was changed by the Catholics or whatever. Um, but it kind of grew on and they, everybody just kind of adopted it over the time. And they just changed it. They just changed it so much over the years where it threw people off. And mind you... When Yahuwah creates, I was like, Father, it cannot be this hard. It has because everything that Yahuwah creates, he puts the answer, he literally puts the answers in front of us. But if we're not paying attention, we can't see it. So everything that he done, he's done, he's put his signature in nature to where we can line back up. And you can, you know, we got a lot of stuff to say, oh, weather, warfare, and they can do, I, I get all that. But they can't, they can't change the sun. They can't change the moon. They can't change the stars. They can cover it up by their cloud machines and chemtrails and all that stuff, but they can't change it. You know, so I'm going to start posting and showing y'all so y'all can start being alerted to it. You know, eventually we are going to start operating back on the Sabbath, but I want you guys to see. So I want to take you along so you can start paying attention because you won't really understand. You can understand a lot of times that somebody is teaching it to you, but a lot of times, if you're not getting like that hands on, like some people learn a lot better by actually doing with their hands, or actually out there observing and taking notes so they can see it with their own eyes and watching it changes. A lot of people don't get it, and it's it's a lot easier just con to continue to go with the flow, you know. And most people that kick against it, they just they just it's easier to just go with the flow. And something I was talking to my mom yesterday, I was like, you know what I realized, um, and I shared it with my sister and my little family. I said what I realized about keeping y'all's commandments like you know i'm just you know i don't want to be the dead horse here but you know in the new testament and what you get taught in a church nowadays it's like oh it's grace by faith and not by works and all this stuff but it also tells you that faith without works is dead so you can't have one without the other you know you have to combine the two um but they say oh the law is done away with we got jesus now and but you know i, I ain't gonna go on about that but Yahuwah always says that there's something that must be done. So, what the beautiful thing about, hey, Aunt Nene, good morning, Beswabu, Beswabu. What I realized about actually keeping y'all's commands, the feast days, like, oh, we don't have to do, do those ritualistic things. But Yahuwah said, oh, yes, you do. Because he said, these are feasts to observe, to help us remember. All the feast days are actually something that we have to physically do. Think about the Feast of Unleavened Bread when I told you how about I had a breakdown going through and found out who puts yeast and vegan products and all this stuff. It, it, it helps us by actually going through and observing physically these things. It helps us to remember his command. So now we have like not only like mental restraints or oh, we know we're not supposed to do that. But a lot of times mental restraints don't hold people. You know, they, it don't really like, oh, yeah. But if you have, like, mental restraints and you're used to doing things that remind you physically, there's a, that's another, like, um, level of protection for you. So you really have to go out of your way to do something that you know you're not supposed to do because you remember it mentally and you practice, practice it physically every year just like the feast of trumpets everybody's supposed to blow the trumpets what blow it at the new moon and all that stuff because it, it gets us involved with our salvation so to speak not that you know you're saved by works but it's a it's a combination of them both and if you're if you're growing up and you're practicing it as you're growing up from a child your parents are teaching you it, it literally helps to shape your character you know, and it teaches you how to be a moral and upstanding, upright person. 
it teaches you um, how not to be selfish with, you know, just going through the different feats. I'm not going to label them all out, but if you have time, you actually go and look at them and things that you're required to do. Not a lot. Even uh, on the Sabbath, where you to sit and rest, stop working. Stop. You have to, a lot of people are workaholics. You have to literally force yourself. I'm going here and sit down and not do nothing. You know, oh, you know, because for one, it's a principle to help you, for one, just rest mentally physically conserve the energy of your body spend some time with your family with y'all don't burn your body out so he he requires us to do something physically and it's really to help us to help us remember like oh and you know it like i said it it builds our character and it helps to level us out and helps to grow us up so i said all that because I want to kind of say you guys just, I know you, we type and we talk and we joke and we laugh and stuff, but this is something we can all see. Everybody can see the sun and the moon and the stars outside of their house and watch the weather change, you know. So I'm going to start um, in the posts and stuff, and I mention on daily videos, but I'll do a little post like, hey, the new moon is coming up. And here's what scripture says about the new moon, because new moons are also treated, although they're not Sabbaths, where it's a day of rest, but... Every time we read about a new moon through the Old Testament, they hold a feast on the new moon. Why? Because it's the um, it's it's the new month. And mind you, if you look at the cat, like we have calendars <clears throat> where all the days are set, you know, and what days. But the Book of Enoch tells us that there are months. There are about six. I think they're about there. There are five months with twenty nine days. There's one month with 28 days and the rest of them are 30 days. On this, the Gregorian calendar is like 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31. Um, and February is 28 days and every four years you got a leap year, which is 29 and it throws off the count. And our year here in the Gregorian calendar is 365 days where well, Yahuwah said it's 364 days continually. But when we're counting the new months, what well, it, it keeps us, it's like a resetting. Like if you get off on your count, let's think, think about it. it has to be good. Yahuwah knew how times was going to change from the day he instituted creation there had to be something that could teach the people and show the people how to get back on track with time so there's a like if you miss it during the week if you don't understand the phases of the moon and what day it is by looking at the moon and how it changes at least you can get a do-over every new moon you can start your count over you know so you never have to wait any longer than 30 days to get your time back right so you would know, of course, you would know the season because, you know, if you're following it on, like we know we're in the first, um, we're still in the first month of the year, which is the month of Passover, which we just celebrated that in Unleavened Bread. So we're in the first year, and I think this is year 6,008. I think we're in year 6,008. Don't quote me on that. I got to double check it. But he, we are to keep watch for the new moon, which, which, um, which announces that this is a new month. So you see, new moon, it's a new month, according to Yahuwah. Now, the new moon, if you look at, I think I showed you the, the moon app. And now I'm going to do screenshots and I'm going to put it in here so you can see. But I remember telling you all about an app that I was using. I still use it because that's the most accurate one that I've seen that I've been using that actually lines up with what I see with my own eyes out here. I was like, oh, this is pretty accurate. Um, so, and then like last year, I was like, I wish there was a, a calendar or app or something. I was like, and if I had the skills to do it, I would create one myself to track it or whatever. But lo and behold, yesterday, there was an app that counts it just like I counted and counted the days according to what I see and how I'm doing it. Like it lined up with the days that I calculated for Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread. Like this year has been the closest year since I've been calculating it that the world in the calendars that they say, oh, Passover starts April 8th. But according to my calculation, how I've been watching, it started the 7th. You know, so this is the close. I think last year was like a year off and you still have people celebrating a, a, um, a week late or a week early. You know, so I see all that. So, but this app actually calculates and counted just the way I counted it. I'm like, it's not rocket science. Like, if you don't have other people's input and their interpretation of stuff, if you just take the text and read through it and get the missing pieces like Enoch, you can calculate it. 
I'm not a scientist. I'm not a rocket scientist, you know, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a big numbers person either, but I was able to read it and calculate it by watching. I'm watching the seasons. I, okay, we're definitely in this season. The, uh, the worms are coming up, so and the, the leaves are starting to bloom, so we're coming into the first season of the year, which starts it with month one of a new year. You know, so I started keeping and calculating, and that's how I got the dates. And also what you'll realize is, um, when you start doing it and if the, okay, there's a transition period between each month where the moon is like completely black. And when it's like completely black all over, they call it the new moon. But when you see the first liver of light, that's when you start your count day one of the new month. But every month you also start your, and I remember talking about this when I changed it, I was like, I truly believe that the Sabbath seven day count starts over with every month because there can't be a continuous counting of the sabbath day if you got them two to three transition days every month where there is no more well it's completely black and the book of enoch said the this is where men go wrong men err in counting the months because sometimes they account the transit transition days but according to the book of enoch the transit the transition days or the days the two to three days that the moon is black they are not they are not reckoned in the counting of the actual um, days of the month where we got okay this month is 29 days you don't count those black days where the moon is completely you don't you don't count the transition days but they are counted in the reckoning of the entire year which gives you a complete 364 um days in the year i hope y'all stand with me i know this sounds like blah 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 mm -hmm. except for the ones <laughs> the ones mm -hmm. like <laughs> what in the world but i i i, I hope i'm explaining it I'm so weak at him scrapping that plate bowl in the background. You heard that? Like, I hey, thought. Man. <laughs> hey, Hey. Hey. He, he eating up some leftovers, Tara. Do you want me to listen? <laughs> you know I'll join in. I got to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Look, so, um, that's why I say, you know what? Maybe I should, should kind of get them joined <laughs> in so they can kind of observe some stuff and look at it themselves and um we can kind of look at it together I, I, I don't just go look at the scriptures that i give you go back and double check me y'all just in case i might be off on something or whatever what sure said wait james eating leftovers hey man listen <laughs> y'all want to listen to the reading no, I'm <laughs> yeah everybody that know james that's how i don't eat no leftovers you know she up here reading man. i want some breakfast she ain't even gonna <laughs> cook man because i sure was like i'm about to go downstairs Ask her, can she cook me some meat? I come down and say, you, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, God, I ain't getting no breakfast this morning. And I'll I cook some in a second. I'll cook some in a second. Okay. I already scraped the plate, like Tar said, man. Nah. I'm joking. Go ahead. Don't read. You're done reading, right? You said that an hour ago. <laughs> you done? Yes. All right. Okay, y'all. I wanted to talk to you. Okay. Before I left and went to work. Okay. All right, y'all. So, um, I'll post <clears> that and let you know because we got a new moon. Coming up, so we'll be getting into the second month of Yahuwah's calendar of 364 days. So that's coming up next week. I think it's the 24th. It's the new moon. You know, so I'll be sharing little clippings on Facebook, screenshots and all that. And I'll put it in our post so you can start looking. But you got to look at it for a little while. Like me, if I don't understand something, I just have to keep reading it over and over and looking at different references before it actually clicks. You know, so. Um, but if we join in together, you can actually see it with your own eyes and you can see how the Sabbath rotates and it does it, especially with the transition days that are not reckoned according to what Yahuwah said that he spoke to Enoch, how they're not reckoned in the monthly count of the months, but they are reckoned in the count of the complete year days. But that's another thing where we get involved with keeping. So we're supposed to be keeping and you're supposed to blow the trumpet and announce the new month. Why? It keeps everybody engaged. It Because we become complacent. Okay, we just got a set schedule. We follow, boom, boom, boom. And you just kind of go comatose or whatever. Yahuwah wants to keep us involved with him in our life. So he gives us stuff to do, you know, and it, it, it keeps us on top of our game our p's and q's are like guys it it's amazing like but when people i, I just kind of let it go and wing out other people say oh the law is done well i was like you have no understanding at all i said and your life would change so much you know it maybe not like overnight but you will begin to see the the small things and you change and prayers being answered almost immediately when you see yourself line up with this stuff like this is the most valuable book in the world like i I treat this like it's money because it's blood blessed us so much throughout our life and warned us and just different things are waiting hold on hold on 
you know, because I'm reminded of things. No, we ain't supposed to do that. You know, even when it comes to like business and everything, like not withholding wages from your people, you know, like say payday is Friday, unless there was something with the bank where you really can't control or whatever. Um, you're supposed to pay your people on time. Even if you know, got um, employees out there paying people under the table. I mean, if you're going to do that, I don't recommend that you do that. If you're using a tax system or whatever. Um, but you got to look at it too. You know what I mean? It's a heartfelt thing. Yeah, you know, but no still. No matter which way you look at it. Even reading, it's a heartfelt. Instead of trying to read it like it's a mere book. Yeah. Do I read it like it's a mere book? No, no, no. Because I be just, all into it. Y'all let me tell you what they... <laughs> But it's supposed to consume you and become you, not just, you yeah. know what I mean? Well, I'm just doing my due diligence. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not walk around like a religious, <laughs> right. you know, you know, person. It's like, no, y'all y'all don't get it. Y'all just don't get it. You know, so this is why, you know, I really enjoy doing this. Like, I would sit up here and read, like, if I saw zero reviewers, and y'all probably seen that sometimes. There's like, ain't nobody in this video. She's still right. I sure am. I'm going to stand my post till I can't stand my post anymore. Because I ain't doing it for y'all. I mean, I'm doing it for y'all to help y'all. But this is a commitment that I made to y'all. You know. Uh, yeah, um, it so. is. It is. It is. Because this so. girl, she listened to the Bible at night. She read it. it I must say, I, I'm, it's not a fake. I tell you that, Jack, because... Well, thank you, husband. I would be honest and be like, man, cut that off. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't true to what you reading. You ain't bad it, bad it. No, I'm joking. And those that know me, like, even Trina, like, she met me in the military. Like, yeah. I was always reading my Bible. You know, it's just, it's just it, it... It captivated me like the like the on Narnia and stuff. Like you got this book, like you really get into it. Like it, that's how it is for me. I got you know, a question. So. What is this question gonna be? Should I end this no. first before? No, no, no. I want you to correct. I want you to, to be honest, right <laughs> quick. Okay. You would have you would have put me on child support. Are you serious to say that? No. You're telling the people like you would have put me. On. Did I, I don't take on care. The, I don't. Did, you trying to tell me I never took care. I don't you, take care of y'all. Yes. Am I not a good good you master? You are a very good master, sire. Sire. Am I wrong? Yes. No, you're not. Did I put you on child support when I had Elijah and we moved here? And you were still I took care of him. Of course. I wasn't gonna put you on child support anyway. So I was like, do I, I not take care? Like you made yes. me feel bad. Like I don't get you everything that your heart desires. See, maybe we should have. Stop this video. <laughs> I get you everything. No, you do. My <laughs> So the world know my husband is a great husband. He's oh a great God. provider. No, he don't really say it because is. you're in front of people. Okay. No. All of y'all that know us personally, <laughs> y'all know. James uh, James Murphy don't play by this household. He take care of his kids. You know. Um, you love us. <laughs> oh, my God, babe. I, I love you. That just made me feel bad. Like, <laughs> I'm not even doing... My father always told okay. me to take care of your responsibilities. Listen. You know what I mean? And Stand I thought in I front that. of... Thank well. you, Trina. Trina says, stand in front of her rag reading. <laughs> 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 like, seriously. Like, oh, what else I'm going to do? Like, I mean, I contemplated. I was like, yeah, no. Uh, hmm. That didn't end well for them. Like, seriously. Yeah. I sit back and I watch people's lives. And I'm like, and I'm, I, I'm really, I really observe stuff. And I was like, yep, I don't want that result. How do I not get there? Uh-uh. Yep, I'm taking that with, mm -mm. Yep, look. Keisha got stoned last week for doing Dirt. that. I'm not going with y'all. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, so but um Tiffany said y'all are something. She laughing. Okay, y'all. Um thanks Tiffany. I love the way you explain blowing of the trumpet. But yeah, so I'm like really excited about this. I wanna help y'all like actually get involved. Okay, Tara, I wanna help y'all get involved. Tara got a question. Go ahead, type your question, Tara. <laughs> yeah. Help y'all get involved with this so y'all can like I was saying how y'all can see how the sabbath rotates and the because at first what was confusing me was the transition of the days where the the two to three days where the moon is dark um and it's not counted and it's it says like in jubilees and also um uh in Enoch, it said men will go wrong and they'll lose the count because because they don't understand the transition days trina said calm down jane she was just giving examples thank you Trina. okay y'all knew i was giving examples when i was talking at the beginning when you first came down, he was talking. She, said, oh. she was just giving examples. Okay. Yeah. No, nah, I wouldn't do child support. Like, seriously. What for? I, I, he, I know he take care of what he need to take care of. He even take care of stuff that's not even his responsibility. He just, he just, he has a good heart. He really does. Okay. Child Hold on. Hold on. Hey, Jolie. When you seen this baby, did you see the clothes it had on? Or did you see that it was a boy boy Tara. Boy, Tara is still <laughs> oh, that girl he said cuz if girl she's definitely wearing a few of Jackson little saved outfits you didn't see the face you didn't see what was between the legs 
You don't really know that it's a boy. Okay. It could be a girl wearing boy clothes. That's what she was saying. Uh, oh, the she justification, Tara. The girl. justification of it all. You know, uh, listen. Uh, when you married into this tribe, hey, listen, you knew what you was getting. Let her, let her have hope. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let her have hope. Have your hope, child. Yeah, have, I'm, have your hope. Believe with her. Believe with her. I can't help or believe a lie. There Listen, is what lineages. What she's justifying saying is just, she's justified. <laughs> I'm not saying you're she's... not gonna get a girl. I'm not saying you're not gonna get a girl. Y'all bless Elijah and Tara with the girl. But the baby that I saw. Bless them with what look, you know what's best for them. Not because they want it. They need another you, boy. <laughs> because of you. That's the blessing. Anyway. Okay. Tara, FaceTime yeah. us after this is over so we can talk. Tara said, you need to pray out loud with me. There's a girl. Oh. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that girl uh, crazy. Jolie said, good morning. Be cool, brother. Love y'all. What's Love good with too, y'all bro. praying? For Tara, girl, amen. Uh, <laughs> Praying for Tara for a girl, amen. Uh, <laughs> Trina said, Tara, you are having babies by Murphy. Y'all having boys. Live with it. Thank you, Trina. Yeah. Thank you. A hey, woman after my own heart. Believe with her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, y'all funny. Look, so Alicia, thank you. I thought it was a boy. Hey, Daniel, how you doing? Yeah, Tara, you might as well hang that up, sis. Hang it up. Hang it up. You getting a boy. <laughs> All right, y'all. I done ran my mouth long enough. Y'all had a bit of a comedy show today. Mr. Murphy decided to join us. You got anything else to say? Any more questions? Y'all got questions you for should, Mr. You Murphy? Should, you sure you're going to answer my questions? Listen, I know what you're about to say. No. Tara done started this foolishness. <laughs> I already know what you're about to say. Uh, what am I about to say? Look, they better hurry up and get this. You know, I'm going to just pray. Father, please close my womb. We don't need no more children. <laughs> <laughs> We talk about a new moon. I thought that was cool. mm, no, I'm joking. Mm, close okay, my womb. We'll watch for the new hey, moon. Hey, listen, listen. Together. Listen. Every month. Listen. <laughs> watch what you ask for. You know what I mean? If the father don't want to close it. Oh, he gets gotta, serious, y'all. Hold on. If the father, because if the father don't want to close it, don't ask for something that you know you really don't want. You don't know what comes with closing your womb. Just yes, it means no more children. That's fine. But just let the father, let the father be in control of that. Not you. That's what's wrong with man now. Man want to put their head in front of everything, and then they, when it goes wrong, what they say? Oh God, too late. You know what you asked for, so don't ask for those things. Thank you, Pastor. I'm fa- sorry. Let me repent. Father, forgive me See, you bogus. for my <laughs> sins. I ask you to close my womb. The Father, is. The father is. is who He is, and He is glorious and awesome in all His ways. The he God's is- willed it. <laughs> not the gods. The gods willed it. No, I'm joking. Not the gods. <laughs> we serve one God, uh, one me? zombie. Oh my God. One Listen. living God. Gemma, come, come take us out. With the, the God prayer, of baby. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come take us out with the prayer. Today. Yahuwah or Yahuwah. Oh, come take Thanks us out. for the early morning comment show, Tiffany said. Come on, take us okay, out. With y'all. The prayer, Gemma. Oh, Jer- Jeremiah. I did not volunteer. James said, come you on. You got peach fuzz on your face. Look at you. Go on there. Go on play with your James mom. James said, come on, Jeremiah. Take Why us out in prayer. Show your face, Jeremiah. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 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 Trina said, James, don't worry. Y'all having a corona baby. Trina, whose side is you on? <laughs> Listen. Did Girl, you say? <laughs> what, you, what you say? Listen. I ain't trying to bring no more children in this world right now. What it say? Woe unto nursing mothers and those who give. Don't, what's it? don't. No, don't, it said woe. Don't, don't, woe. Don't, let don't me do finish. That. Let me finish if the somebody, scripture. If somebody, let me finish the scripture. It says, woe unto Tara. Put your, and you gonna be okay. Woe unto pregnant mothers. <laughs> See, and those See, who give suck. Up. In those days, meaning those women who breastfeed in those days. I, I mean, said those know. days. I don't, these, I mean, those, no, anyway, these, let's talk about this. These them days, bro. Well, there's always that. Listen, listen. We, <laughs> we can talk about that on a whole other subject. But let's talk about this. Jeremiah about to be mad. He came downstairs. Yeah, he over no, here no, no, getting no. him some leftovers, too. Listen, that... It does not apply to you if the fuck... Fo- I'm sorry, Pastor. Go ahead. Why you do that, man? <laughs> that made I'm me sorry. feel like... a. Man with big bell bottom pants and cuffs <laughs> and, and them ugly old church shoes like Dickens shoes on my pants. <laughs> nah, listen, man. Listen. I uh nah, it doesn't apply to you when you know what I mean? 
you just got you know what I mean just give it a chance give it give it a just give it a chance you know that's easy Bella needs somebody to play with I want her to have a she friend you know what I mean she has a whole a princess you got a princess cousins. no and no, I mean girl I mean get him pregnant she can tell her she baby me. Girl, I ain't, mm, I ain't getting pregnant during the pandemic. Who's in charge? I done took the shot. Who's in charge of you? I'm in charge of me. Who, who's in charge of you? The, the topper, who the do you? Topper, who's in charge of you? Be a little more clear. Who do you let control you? Me. No, who would you let control you? <laughs> no, that's the problem. Why get you out the way? Let him. You serving him. Oh, yeah. I, okay, I, so I, if he's in control... Why are you in control? You don't supposed Listen, to be in control. I ain't, you got supposed- no, I ain't got no problems with him leading me. How do you know he's not if you are? Anyway, I, I hear him. I'm, he's, he's talking through me right now. I'm saying to you right now. Huh, let me double check You that. said we were child. Father. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get prepared. No, I'm joking. I'm yeah. joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, Go uh, let us get out of here. <laughs> Ah. Oh, no, funny, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make... Okay, y'all. His face is about to shine upon you. <laughs> ah. Jamal standing at the microwave uh, looking like... get the light. I you should have came down light. these stairs. He always talking about he want to know a girl, Pam. He is like... He is not the one what? that's going to have his body... What? Thrown all out of way. Walk around that. here for nine months. You gotta know what it another is. Another whole human being inside your body. Childbirth. Talking about he all, he child, talking. Childbirth. Telling me to be fruitful and multiply. Childbirth. Be fruitful. <laughs> it's a blessing. Talk don't look at it as. Alone. Don't look at it. I don't know why people look at. You got people out here that, that want kids. They can't have them, man. Be blessed that you are able to have. I am. Honestly, I, you know I what I mean? Yo, that means every all the inside mm. of you is working properly. Don't you want that? You yes. know what I mean? To be Yes, I want it. Yes, yes. That don't mean that you burn, you cur- I mean, come on, man. So let's I know. Just keep, ain't the right moment. I am blessed. Yeah, the man. fruit of my womb yeah. is blessed. Yeah. I know that. I know that. Because I've dropped seeds in the oh. ground. <laughs> oh, Lord bless us and keep us. <laughs> 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 we got to go, people. Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. May you who will bless us and keep us. May he make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May you who will lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. All right, y'all. Great comedy show today. Be watching out for the, the posts and stuff. Yeah. Who the baby is woke. So that's Mm -hmm. our key to roll out. All right, y'all. I love y'all. And I will see y'all. I'll see y'all Sunday. I see you Sunday. I am unable to can with (laughs) y'all. Tara. I mean, not Tara. Tiffany. Non-stop comedy show over here. All the time. We're about to FaceTime Tara, though. Okay. All right, y'all. I love y'all. See you Sunday.